you need to learn one thing before you even start this stuff. Something which is unfortunately, especially living in this day and age and living in the Western world even more, is something called you need to learn the adab, meaning you need to know to be polite. You know what I'm talking about. Because this day and age, what is the character of the human being in general? What does the kid learn in school these days? Huh? Absolutely. Right? Look into my eyes, know it, that uh, I don't like it, it's not fair, I answer, right? All this, and that's becoming the norm. That doesn't mean when you are a student and this, we're going to come to this, that you're not going to ask and you're not going to be the positive addressing. But the other with the teachers, you need to train yourself to be uh, a, a better a person who knows nothing in learning before you even take this class. For example, I'm going to give you some of the examples of the old uh, Imam Malik. Right? You all know Imam Malik. He said, كانت أمي تعلمني وتقول لي اذهب إلى ربيع فتعلم من أدبه قبل علمي. He was a young man or a young boy. So he used to get him ready to go to the class. Look at yourself or your child. And to Amimi means he used to make him be sure he dressed properly, you know, wear the turban. And she said, go to Rabia, one of the teachers. But to learn politeness and manners before you learn anything else, go and learn manners from him. Manners, meaning how do I sit? Remember for those of you who were with us in the retreat in the weekend, and you looked at me when I first started talking about this, I like, the way you sit, the way you handle your book, the way, especially for the Quran. All these are signs of the manners. The more respect you give to this knowledge, Allah will give you more. For example, Abdullah bin Mubarak, a very famous, almost famous, and he's a knowledgeable and a faqih. And Adab manners is two thirds of knowledge. But learn to be polite with the knowledge of Allah. It's two thirds of the knowledge of Allah. And the more polite you are, the more humble you are, Allah will teach you more. He teach you more, give you more knowledge, or make you understand way easier than you thought. For example, Sufyan Thawri, which is a Fatima, very famous one, he said, Laysa amalun ba'da al-fara'ud afdalu man talab al-ayn. There is no good deed to do after the obligation, that Allah made the obligation, but to seek knowledge. And he said in his time, the man, meaning man or a woman, will never start learning before they start to be polite. Give me an example about us these days. Are we polite with the... I'm not talking about myself, I would be I'm talking about when you go... No, I really mean it. When you go to real, the real youth, the real scholars who spend their life learning, and we sit in a lecture. And how do we behave? How do we sit? How do we act? How do we behave when we disagree with the with the chef or with the teacher about something? How do we normally? And I'm sure that Mustafa has much more to comment later on. But in general, in general, we think that we are equal, equal. Right? And as all the teachers teach you, especially when you start taking this job, they tell you, if you're going to come to learn this gym with a full cup, you will learn nothing. You know what it means. Because if the cup is full and you're going to put it in it, what's going to happen? It's going to overflow. So whatever you're learning is going to come up. You need to come to this gym, to this knowledge, especially the sacred knowledge we're talking about, with an empty cup. I know nothing. You come to a lecture. And you say, I know nothing. Once you come with this attitude, Allah will make you see things you've never seen it before. I'll give you an example. How many times, and all of you, when you read the Quran, for example, the Zuhammah. We all, how many times have read the Zuhammah? But when you read it with an open heart, and Allah has opened your eyes, how many times do you look at one eye and say, did I read this before? Is this a really read the one? How come I didn't see this? What happened? It's the same eye. The Quran didn't say it. It's you. It's your attitude toward the things. 
so we order it that you come, the way you learn, the way you speak, the way you look at this, this knowledge, you need to look at it as a ni'mah, as a blessing, that Allah will not give it to anyone. And if He gives it to you once and you didn't know the value, and you're not grateful to it, Allah will not give it to you. So, for example, also, Abdullah bin Mubarak, he said the following, من تهاون بالأدم هم سوأبر took the manners of learning not seriously. Allah will punish him by taking away from him the love of doing the extras, the sunnah. Pay attention to this. These are small things. But it's extremely important. So if you don't think being polite with your teacher, following what he or she says, when I'm reading the book, the way I sit and I read the book, Allah will not, this is what he does. You're going to look at the sunnah as the sunnah with the buddhi. Didn't do the Torah talk and said, Ma'ala the sunnah. So Allah first will take the sunnah. And he said, Men tahawana the sunnah, fa'uqi wa bi sharmani fara'um. And whomsoever will take the extra lightly, you're going to lose the obligation. Ask anyone who stops telling how did they, how did this happen? The first thing they will tell you is what? They stop doing the thing. And then gradually they delay the salah. And then, salah is done. And that's why, don't look at any of the sunnah. You know, about to arrest what your salam did it. Don't look at it as very likely. It's a sunnah. And then who was taking, took the obligation is very likely, Allah will deprive him from knowledge. So you cannot be a student of knowledge and you do not pay. Let alone regular, let alone on time, let alone the extras. And I'm, I'm, I brought the salah as an example, but I'm talking about every obligation. I cannot be, uh, and I said this many times in the retreat, I can't be a student of knowledge and I start watching TV all the time. In November, Allah will take it away from me. Or you will, you will have it, but you'll understand nothing. So you really have to learn the adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first thing you start, when you start learning, is what we learn in Tafsir. You empty your heart from all the demons. You cannot look down at people and you're arrogant and you think you will learn. You cannot be jealous from people except not the jealousy, the risk. The positive jealousy, if someone is a half of a Quran, I want to do it. If somebody has memorized all the books of Hadith, I want to be like that person. If somebody wakes up at 4 o'clock every day for a family, I want to be like that. That's okay. That's not who is she? She's with me in the class or she? No. You need to empty all the, all the bad characters in you. You look at this. You memorize this. You practice this. You ask Allah to give you this. Then you come to the following points of the aim. You get my point? The first thing is work on your manners. Work on your manners. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a shape for a teacher to press on these points, you are lucky. Because these things you don't see Allah these days. Unfortunately, if Allah gives you one who really pay attention to the other of the aim, then you are absolutely lucky. Now come to the point. Number one is the ikhlas. Intention. Intention means what? What's the intention? Simple question. What is the intention? What's the intention? There's one answer to what this question is why. Why I'm doing this? Why you're here? Right? Why do you want to watch TV? Why do you want to go to college? This question, the answer is the Nia. So I want to learn because I want to be rich. Your Nia is to be rich. So the first thing is why you want to learn this. Why? The answer has to be only one answer. And that is to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is the cross sincerity is an obligation or is an extra? Hmm? It's an obligation. Who says so? Remember what he said. If you're going to give me a hook, you need to give me a belly. If you're going to give me a ruling, give me your, your proof. I can easily come and tell you, no, it is not. You're right, by the way. Absolutely, it's an obligation. But who says so? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where is that? 
صفات الجمعة أي صفات البينة وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين. They were not ordered but to worship Allah alone with the sincerity. So this, especially this knowledge, this kind of knowledge, no reason, no reason you are seeking it but to get close to Allah sometimes. How about there is no other place I can study and Allah just put me in that time? Nothing else. I couldn't get to any college and then, you know what? Okay, let me get a year to study with you. What do I do? Where is my meaning here? Is that possible? Yeah? Or you got to you got accept the bus stop this year, 2018. And he said, you know what? I have one year. Why do I want to stay home? Let me join California Institute University and then I'll, I'll study. What do you do with that? Hmm? So there again. Exactly. Do you remember what we learned? You always examine your need because the need can change. You apply to some studies because you really loved it. And then after a month, you find out this is too difficult. This is not what I like. Right? You need to re re look at the name and say, no, if you don't like it, but it's going to be for a while. So you come in here and you, and you say, you know what? The only reason I'm here is because there's nothing else I can do. Fine. You look at it and you know what? Allah is so generous. He brought me here. I wasn't thinking, why don't I take the reward and I'm going to do it for Allah's time. So you revisit your meaning. And the Rasulullah in the first time said in this beautiful study, whomsoever, man ta'allama ilm, mimma yudfa'a bihi wajillahi, la yata'allama, illa li yusibu bihi aradam min al-dunya, lam yajidu arafa al-jannah, yawm al-qiyam. Whomsoever, and this is Hadith Ahmed and Abu Dawood, whomsoever, learned this day, any kind of thing, any kind of knowledge that will supposedly, in dunya math, in dunya meaning, it will get you close to Allah. I want to memorize the Quran. I want to get to Islamic studies. I want to be a PhD student in Islamic studies. This is obviously knowledge of dunya. Whosoever did this, but for no reason but to get a reward in this dunya. For example, I learned there is an opening in, for example, Southern California University for a chaplain. And the only way I can get this chaplain, and I really want to be part of the faculty in University of California, is to study Islamic study. So I'm going to go and do this. And because I want to be a chaplain. Because I want to be on the faculty. Whomsoever does this, he gets something of the dunya. He, he or she will not smell the smell of dunya. They must know the smell of Jannah. And there's nothing sacred than learning Qala Allah Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you really have to look at your knee. For example, why you are here today? Why you are here? Don't tell me. And so Allah Qala Allah for two. But that's my point. You really have to keep asking yourself why I'm doing this, why I'm learning. And that goes to your children. Why do you want your child to be a part of the Qala? Why? Because it's the book everybody else is. It's becoming, it's something that's a beautiful, it's like a, it's a, a spreading, I wouldn't say disease, it's a, a spreading character, which is beautiful. That's why. Why do you want to do it? You are also to look at this, because for people in front, in the, when you go out, people say, oh, mashallah, her children are fat. And that's not for Allah. Right? Or for yourself. So, so definitely, look at your meaning. What is the famous hadith about meaning? Hmm? The famous hadith. Any book you open, the book of hadith, the first hadith in Al-Bukhari, what is that? Inna al-a'malu dhiniyah. Right? Verily, these are measured according to the intention. Right? And you know the famous hadith, why uh, the man who wanted to go to Medina to get married to a woman. And when they came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Ya Rasulullah, how we can let him come with us? He's only coming with us because he wants to marry a woman. And what was the answer? If he is coming to marry the woman, then he will get the reward of marrying the woman. Woman can have just to Allah or Rasul. And if he is coming with us for Allah and his Rasul, he will get the reward for Allah of migrating for Allah and his messenger. So these 
Nina is the most important thing in everything we do, let alone when we study for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Yusuf, how many of you are coming here? Right? So who's Abu Yusuf? Abu Yusuf is Prophet, the Imam. I said, who's coming here? So, Abu Hanifa, right? Okay, so Abu Yusuf, he said, Uridu, or learn this thing for Allah Ta'ala wa Ta'ala. I have never looked at this one. This is Abu Yusuf. So, in the Lama Adri to Majlisa, up to, in the Fihi and Atawada, Lam Akum Illa Wallah Kadra Fahmi. Okay, I'm going to translate. He said, Learn this only for Allah. Meaning, don't look for any dunya reward. And he said, whenever I sit in a gathering, in my dunya, it's only to be humble to Allah Taala. I have never left, but Allah has elevated me. And whenever I sat in a gathering, so, so that I know, I did not get up with Allah has to And who is this? So always, never, never do, especially this thing, this knowledge, don't do this for any reason but to please Allah. And that's the continuous question you're going to talk to Allah. Are you happy with me? If this is how you want me to do this, if this is pleasing you, Ya Allah, if it is not, then change me, show me. And don't worry what people talk about you. People can praise and people cannot praise. It doesn't matter. Remember, what's the sign of that you are sincere to Allah? In general, in anything you do, what is the sign? And the teacher, the scholars always teach you this. They say, Alamatul Ikhlas. And you're the power in the Kalmat who is done. The sign that you are sincere to Allah. Praise and no praise is the thing. So if people look at you and say, MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, you're the best person ever. And people look at you and say, you are the worst ever. No change inside you. Then you are sincere to Allah. And this is fine. And this is in everything. You know, the kids praise the way I cook. The, the kids do not praise the way I cook. I speak for you, your husband. The kids say, JazakAllah, oh, Daddy, you gave me this. Daddy, you didn't do anything for me all your life. It doesn't matter. Because I'm doing this for Allah. So, equal praise, that's why don't praise people too much. Because then we get used to it, and our ears will get used to it, and we'll miss it. Because it's the next love just us love to be praised. So, once you have them the same, then you are in a good place. So, the first thing is an equal. Number two, which is, we didn't mention it, we're going to say, number two is to call Allah. Allah, you have to be Allah conscious, you have to be Allah mindful, you have to look at Allah Taala in every step you do. Right? And one of the nicest, the most beautiful definitions of Taqwa is actually two, two of the scholars. One of them, I don't remember his name, who said, أَنْ يَجِدُكَ فَيْتُ فَيْتُ أَنْ يَجِدُكَ أَنْ يَرَاكَ فَيْتُ يُرِيدُكَ أَنْ يَجِدُكَ فَيْتُ يُرِيدُكَ وَإِلَّا يَسْتَفِدُكَ فَيْتُ يُرِيدُكَ Allah will find you where He wants you to be. And He will not miss you where He wants you to be. Or the other way you say it, He will find you where He wants you to be. And He will not find you where He doesn't want you to be. For example, time of Allah, where should I be? Time of Allah, where should I be? On my Sajjada, on my Musalla, in the right view. I shouldn't be. Watching TV or talking on the phone. I'm not talking about emergency. There's no emergency in TV, by the way. And, and on the phone. I'm, I'm talking about regular life. So, taqwa, and you did it, alhamdulillah. And you did it, okay, to Amarak. He finds you where he ordered you. He wants you to be. Al Qudna Habib, another scholar, he defines taqwa beautifully. In ta'amal, bifa'atillah, ala nurillah, harju tawadallah. You work, do. Anything in your life, what pleases Allah? It's an obedience to Allah. And how do you know this? Based what Allah taught 
And for only one reason, you want his pleasure. تعمل بطاعة الله. You work, do, say in your life everything which is Allah. على نور من الله. What he showed me and taught me, not the way I like it. And you only, only you want his pleasure. So this is the question. Taqwa Allah. There is no student of knowledge. And he or she is in the path of obedience to Allah. And I'm talking about other things. And we said this many times. Obedience of Allah is not only do. The obedience of Allah is don't do. So if he tells me don't do something, my obedience to Allah is to follow this. And he tells me lower your gaze. And this is to men and women. What does that mean? You know, I need to, to lower your gaze. My gaze. is not eating but. And we live in America, we live in this day and age. He said, lower your gaze. And this is the real Qatari. This is clear proof from the Quran. Allah says, don't back bite. Meaning, don't back bite. There's not if and but, and I didn't mean it, and it says, slip of the tongue. So, taqwa Allah, and Allah said, it's really important in Baqar. You want to learn? What do you do? Have taqwa. What's taqwa Allah? Well, you are living from Allah. You practice taqwa, Allah will teach you. And you're going to say, how oh, Allah is going to teach you? He's going to teach you by sending you teachers. He's going to teach you by making you learn what you are learning. He's going to teach you by making you practice. He's going to teach you by sending you people who does things in front of you, which things that please Allah, and you see this is very easy and nice. By you having the taqwa of Allah. And I keep using the word taqwa because our ear needs to get used to this word. It's a good love. meaning what in general? It put a field between you and me, or ask the anger of Allah and His punishment. And how do I do this? By obeying Him. So I can't be a student of knowledge, or I'm memorizing the Quran, or I'm learning Hadith, or whatever that's close, bringing close to Allah, and I am have a morning light, and then I come home, and I am done, I'm like anybody else. You talk as people talk, and you do what other people do. You can do this. That's all law. And you all know the famous ayah, وَمَا يَسْتَقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَقْرَجَةً Whomsoever, practice the taqwa of Allah, Allah will give him ways, open ways to you, to him. And the best risk, the best sustenance Allah will give you is a good knowledge. Knowledge is changing. So, so far, two. Any questions so far? Clear? Not too hard? Not like the teacher, the Rabbi Ami? Number two, number three. Three, you practice what you learn immediately. Al Amalu bil Ami. It's the same style of course as Zuma. Al Ladina Yasamiuna Kaula, Tel Sabiuna. Ula is the Ladina Hadallah, but Ula is the Ladina Albar. Those who listen. So the first line. The first step to learn, you need to listen. And don't rush and come to conclusion. I know this. This is not good. I'm not interested. This is not going to get me anywhere. Don't do this. Just send your own call. And Allah didn't say, just send your own external call. They listen to the best. No, they listen to everything. So just send your own external They follow the best of it. So you've learned five lectures about, for example, color. You're going to listen to these five. And then you're going to follow the best one. Meaning, the closest to the closest to the Quran, the easiest one I can do according to these things. It's the Bi'una, Al Amal, Bil Ilm. You need to practice. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, Al Ilmu, yes, to Bil Amal. Ilm, knowledge, call for actions. Wa illa, Tarakahu, Tarakahu. If you're not going to practice, knowledge will go away. How many times we started? How many of you, I mean, if you can show me how that's good, if not, it's okay, started the course. What's the drop rate of course, Islamic courses? That's most of us. What is it? 50%? Ya yeah, Allah. And the Quran tool is 50%. This is one known statistics. So the class starts at 10, and then then it will get 5 grade. And now 75 is even, even more. Why do you think this? Number one, because we don't have Number one, I think it's our Nia. We have really to look at the Nia. 
a number of times because we don't have it. Yeah, we learned, for example, our time of product. What's that time of product? Can we ask? Is it okay if I ask? What's the figures of time? Just give me a number, how many they are, regardless of the Madhavid. Other than Muna and Yalpa, and of course your Just give me a number, throw a number. The pillars of Salah, meaning if you didn't do it, if you missed it, that Salah is invalid. You did not do Salah. You just moved it. Hmm. Give me one part of the numbers. Give me one. Let's be a good example. Alhamdulillah. Hmm? I'm sorry to say, okay? Before, before, take it, take it one by one so you never forget it. And there is a difference if it's outside or inside for that. That's fine. We will say that's okay. But there's one before I go for the court. That's all before. I'm talking about inside. You said Allah. There's one before you go for the court. Can I pray for it? And I have no excuse? I say, yeah, you have to be standing. I say, I'm not going to Right? You want to go more? Three in Rukhua, three in Sujood, and then the third day, the last day. Jalf al Akira, and then you have the last Tisafud, and then you have the Tisafud, and then you have the sequences, it has to be in that sequence, and you have the ultimate noun. That's the picture of time of time. These are ABCs. I don't want to do too much because then you're going to probably have you will leave. But the point I'm trying to make is I pray daily, and I don't know the Arkhan, or if I memorize the Arkhan, and I'm not practicing them, I'm not going to learn anything. You need to practice what you learn. Whatever you learn. The last time you attended a lecture or listened to a YouTube or read a book, this is all out Or you listen to an e-book, or read an e-book, or listen to an audio book. You need to start something. It's difficult time to Allah says that Allah makes it easy. But don't move. And you know all the Sahaba, when they memorize the Quran, how do they memorize the Quran? He said, Allah, Allah, Allah has the famous one. He said, we did not move. Ten ayahs, we did not move to the next ten ayahs before we memorized, understood, and practiced. So, al-in, we amal. And I also, also, the Quran story, he said, إِنَّمَا يُرَادُ الْعِينِ بِالْعَمَلِ The reason you learn is to practice. Do not leave, look at this one, don't leave knowledge to practice. Meaning, I won't have time to study. I'm going to do Qiyam al and I'm going to read Qur'an, and I'm going to memorize Qur'an, I'm not going to learn anything. Don't do that. And don't leave the Amal for any. And don't not practice because you're studying. You know what? I'm studying, I don't have time for Qiyam. For, for I don't have time to read my Qur'an, I'm studying. You need to get to the balance. You need to get to the balance. You have to practice what you learned, whatever you learned. Practice it before you go to the next one. So, so far we learned a meal and the two have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three is practice. Number four, be patient. Be patient. You have too many forces work against us when we are learning the sacred knowledge. What's the first force against us? Before Satan, you always throw it on Satan. Before Satan. It's us, yes. Us, not see, me, inside me, right? It's boring, it's too hard. What I'm going to get out of it? I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to sleep. So number one, I have to work against my nuts. Who is absolutely shaitan? And how shaitan will operate? There are so many ways to answer that. One way he will operate is through people. How many of you people will look at them and say, what are you studying? So how much they will pay you? What job you will get? Right? Can I be a little bit tougher? So when your son or daughter wants to study Islam studies, right? what do you normally say? Go to medical school, finish medical school, and then study Islam studies. Two or four. Why? Why it's so important to be a physician? I'm one, I'm not making fun of them, I'm one of them. But why is it so important? Because we pay make, we make more money than Islam studies. So, Shaitan will come to your friends, your parents, your colleagues. Like, what are you doing, especially if you already established, why are you doing this, you know? 
What else is God going to come to you, to you, or to me, or to us? Can I tell you? It's too difficult. This is way too hard. You cannot do this. Especially if you're not 18 or 19, you know, you finish college and you're working, it's going to come and tell you, this is, uh, this is way too, well, you, you're, you're too old for this. There's no age limit. There's no age limit. Allah does not put age limit to memorize the Quran or to learn about the Rasari Sartre Sana or to learn how to get close to Allah Subhanahu Never. That's all. What other way to find something? Ask yourself why you're not doing it. Then you will know the answers. Why you're not doing it? Then you don't have time. Right? I'm too busy. You don't have time to watch TV? You don't have time to cook. You don't have to entertain time to entertain people every weekend. Even invited or you have guests. You have time for that. But why don't I have time for the study? Because that's how Shaitan comes to me. Shaitan doesn't come to me. You don't have time for the, to go out. No, no, you need to feel good about yourself. So you need some time out. Off of it. So you need to be patient against yourself, against the Shaitan. Absolutely. One of the tools, one of the ayahs that you basically practice with you as you are studying, memorizing the Quran, is the ayah of Surah Al-Jumar. Inna ma yuwaqa sadiruna ajrahum b'gayr shifar. Verily, those patient people, people who are patient, people who practice patience, they will be rewarded unaccountable. And the scholar teaches you that Allah subhanahu ta'ala in the Quran, two things. He said there is no accounted a fixed amount of reward. Everything he says one times ten. Except two things. One in the Quran, one in the Hadith. One is Sabr. In the Mayyuk of Sabr, in the Ajrahum Bhagavad Sabr. Verily, those who practice patience, who their character is patient, Allah will reward them. And the second one is fasting, which is part of Sabr. And he said, Allah said, Fasting is for me, and I will reward it. How much? So you really have to practice patience with this, and you need to teach yourself to be patient. Why do I need patience? I need patience, number one, to find the right place I want to study, the right school, the right program. These days you have to pay for it. These days you have to take time off. You have to go to the teachers. You have to be patient with the teachers who can come to this. Some teachers may be not your style. Some teachers may be tough. Some teachers may be not the way you are used to. You need to be patient with it. And you're going to beg and ask Allah to give you patience. Because that's the main reason why people drop out. Because they are not patient. They're going to say, I'm not going to be able to do this. This is too much for me. Don't do this. At all. The more La ilaha illallah, there's a few questions which you probably, most of you, if not all of you, know the meaning. And Allah said the meaning of it. When you try to get close to Allah, and you come in an arm length, how Allah will come to you? In a one So, I take one step towards Allah, and Allah will take two steps towards you. I take two, Allah will take ten. How? And Allah, and Allah is not moving, not moving, not coming. This is how it is. You are so finding it difficult to study, finding it difficult to stay in that program. Just to stay. Turn to Allah and say, Ya Rabbi, Wallahi, I want to come close to you. What's going to happen? You're going to feel different. Allah will send you a teacher who you love. Or a friend who's going to really make you feel happy. Or suddenly you're going to start enjoying it. Or you're going to find it really easy. What happens? You're the same human being. What happens is, you're, you talk to Allah, you want to get close to Him, and you practice patience. You have to be patient. It doesn't come. Actually, and I say this all the time, again, in my profession, any knowledge you are learning, you need to be patient. In residency, I'm an obvious one. In residency, you work 18 hours, right? sometimes 36 hours. You work 18, then you're on call, then you finish next day, and you go. When I look back, I was like, how did I do that? Why? Because I love this, and I want to do it. And I want to give the patient. Same thing when you study the dream of Allah Just say, Allah will make it easy. The people who learned is not better than me, and I always say this to myself. Allah gave us all 
two eyes, two ears, one tongue, and the same brain. Nobody was given four, and I was given two. So I said, I can't eat. The difference is how much you have patience and endurance. How much you really want to do. And I always say this to the ladies, cooking any kind of a food that has a lot of it, how much it takes you? Two or three hours to get things ready for this. Some people look at you and say, I can never do this. You know, I'm just going to pick up the phone and order. Why do you do it? Because you love it. You want it. So anything you want, and you love this, and love will make it easy. And you just keep going. You just keep going. And the thing is today is a Friday. What did Sayyidina Musa do? What's Friday? Why did I say Friday? Okay, so the two trials is for this time. So if we can talk about trials, things will be tested in this dunya. We're going to be tested in our dream, we're going to be tested in our money, we're going to be tested in our knowledge, and we're going to be tested in our, in the power. So the story of Sayyidina Musa is about what? About knowledge, right? Sayyidina Musa, we're going to come to this, Sayyidina Musa thought that he knows everything, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him someone, who, Sayyidina Sibir, who knows way more than him. First thing Sayyidina Sibir said, told Sayyidina Musa, you're not going to be patient. Because it is hard. You will not be able. Right? And what did Sayyidina Musa first said? He said, you me, insha'Allah, sabira. No, 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 no. He didn't give up my soul. No, no, no. I will, by the grace of Allah, I'll be patient. This is what you tell yourself. I will be patient. And keep reminding yourself that people who learn are not better than me. They, are, they, they don't have anything more than I do, except more a result. So, Nina, Taqwa, your pure intention, Allah's conscious, practice what you learn, and be patient. Five. Don't be shy to ask. A student of knowledge wants to learn and you do not understand everything, you do not know everything, especially for those of you who don't know the Arabic language, because a lot of the books of Deen are in Arabic, let alone the Quran. Don't be shy. Having said that, the other way around is don't be too arrogant. And learn how to ask the truth or your teachers, because it's part of the other. Right? And if you disagree, and if it's going to come, of course you will disagree with people, because there is a different opinion. How are you going to present it? It's never, ever, in this path, you say to your teacher, you're wrong. You're done. The law will not teach you. Most of the youth, the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, they would not get offended by what you say, because they're near for Allah. But you will not be wrong. Don't say you're wrong. This is how I learned. Right? You always, what do you say? You know what? I'm probably wrong, but that's what I read. Can you please explain it to me? And then, probably your teacher is going to tell you, you know what, there's different opinions. I'm going to start learning about different opinions, especially in circle. So, ask. And, and I always say this to the woman. They ask the authorities for the Islam questions. I am an OBD when I'm not. And I feel very uncomfortable talking about it, and they absolutely did not have, they were not hesitant to ask, who asked the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about menstruation? And it's in the Quran, where it's the only time in the world, they ask you about menstruation, who asked it? The answer is in the next hour, who asked? The Sahaba. It's the only time in the world, all who are other, tell them it's Pain is hardship. Stay away from the woman in during menstruation. Right? They ask you about gambling and about alcohol. They ask. And the woman asks for a story Then you ask. Because if you don't understand, you need to understand that you, before you ask, you need to learn the other, the etiquette of asking. Ask with an etiquette. Don't ask with, and for example, very common these days, you hear people say, I read in the internet. But I'm not saying the internet is wrong. No. There's a lot of beautiful information there on the net, but there's also a lot of information you need to not read. And unless you have the knowledge, you're not going to be able to, to differentiate. 
So you cannot come and argue with a scholar saying, I read on the internet. Let alone other things be easier. So ask and learn the adab of the asking. Number six, which the brother said is, be humble. Be humble. The more you're humble, the more Allah will teach you. Allah will get you to have seen people. Yani, if I tell you they are walking Quran, I'm not exaggerating. And I'm talking about humans, some of my teachers. Walking Quran. They talk one line and they quote the ayah with nothing in front of them. I've seen women who quote the hadith by the Senate by everything. Right? And you see them. If you start even to say the Zaki Lauka, their face will come right and they tell you what do I know. And here we are, we learn this and that. We memorize this or this and we start becoming, and if they don't call us this name or that name, we get the next one. Be humble. Be humble. Very humble. Right? And even the Sahih Prophet was saying that Allah gave him the knowledge. What was the only dua that Allah asked him in the Quran to ask for more? In Taha, wa qul Rabbi zidni ilma. And look at the way of the dua. Wa qul, say, Rabbi, my Lord, zidni, increase me in knowledge. Meaning, I'm not going to do it. It's not me. It's not my because I'm very smart, because I'm very hardworking. I and I. Wa qul Rabbi zidni, you are going to increase me in knowledge. That's humble. Very humble. And Sayyidina Umar said a beautiful one. Ta'allamu al-ilm. Learn the knowledge. Wa ta'allamu lahu al-sakina wal-waqar. And learn for it. To be humble. Sakina. To be serene. To be calm. And to have dignity. Wa tawaba'u li man tu'allimu wa li mimman tata'allamu. And lower yourself. To those who you are teaching and to those who you are learning from, lower yourself. Sometimes you get your teacher 20, 25 years younger than you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the age. It's not about the age. It's about who knows more. Right? The teacher can be older, the teacher can be younger. I have patients, my patients who are my teachers. When I, and they, in the office, they call me the Torah. But when I am their student, they call me by my name. And I'm very happy with it. And the same thing, I don't call them by their first name because they are my patients. No, I am in the class, I'm their student. And the same thing here. You don't look and say, what does he know? He just came, he just graduated. Doesn't matter. He learns, he knows more. May Allah reward you more her by giving you their time and you learn from them. Each one you can learn from them something. So ta'allamu al-ilm. Learn the knowledge. Be humble to those who teach you and those who you are learning. وَلَا تَكُونُوا جَبَادِرَةَ الْعُلَمَةَ And don't be so arrogant and mighty. In no way your knowledge is going to combine with your ignorance. If you are ignorant, then you are arrogant. This doesn't come together. It does not come together. And the Imam Malik told Harun al-Rasheed, إِذَا أُلِّمْتَ عِلْمًا فَالْيُرَى عَلَيْكَ أَفَرُهُ When you are taught something, people should see the result in you. When you are taught something, people should see the result in you. It's not I know and I just say, people have to see it. You learned, for example, um, uh, you, you learned not to look down at people. You learned arrogance is a major thing. And people should see this in your behavior. So when you enter, and you entered, and you are the last one to enter, and everybody took the good place, and you are the oldest person, but that's the only place available. You learn not to be arrogant. You learn to be humble. Then you're going to go and say, that's what Allah gave me that place, I can give that to a You practice the and this, and see what Allah will give you. Five people will get up and give you, give you the seat. Because you're not looking for it. So definitely be uh, humble. And Imam Shafi'i, he said, no one sees this knowledge with arrogance and he will be successful. But those who seek this knowledge 
by being very humble and living minimum and serve the knowledgeable, he will be successful. Serve the people who teach you. And I'm not saying this because I'm saying I'm teaching you. I'm older than that. I'm saying this in general because we're seeing this, we're losing this. The people who teach us, you should never, it's like your parents, you never forget their favor upon you. They have to be part of your job. They have to be part of whatever they taught you. They taught you how to read the Fatiha, and you say it's only a Fatiha, it's a Fatiha. Anything they teach you, young or old, make a dua for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make you do Ibnillah. Teach someone, including your children, and they will make a dua for them. So always be humble. Number seven, let me tell me one thing we have to do. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the rest. Maybe I'm not going to get into detail because we need to stop. Number seven, you need to have high bar. Raise the bar when you are learning this game. Raise the bar. Don't say, I'm going to, for example, memorize the Quran. It's okay if I memorize the Quran. Don't say that. Say, I'm going to memorize the whole Quran. Raise the bar. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have books coming to your home, do you, do you give them one book? Of course not. At least five, six, or ten, right? They are my gifts. Why? Because they are my gifts. So why would Allah want to say, okay, one just raise the bar? And, and I say this always, it's a beautiful hadith, and they always remind you of this hadith when you are learning this book. Hadith and Ashtamili, or Salih 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 says, you have to name Hums Qabla Hums. Take the advantage of five before five. Some of you may know this hadith. And if you all know it, alhamdulillah, that's the term of the cross and Father Nami. Remember, remind, the reminder benefits those who are the believers. If can you come to Abu Hamza, take advantage of five before five. Shababuka, Abu Hamza. Being young, youth, you have energy, you have the resolve, you don't mind, you don't need much sleep, you have the energy, you don't need, much, you don't need to eat that much, you don't need to sleep as before you get old. Shababuka, Abu Hamza. Your health before you get sick. You have had it, you cannot stop. You start having high blood pressure, and the physician will tell you maybe it's not a good idea. You have diabetes, forget it. So, you're three times before you get busy. You're single before you get married. You only marry with no children before you have children. Summer before school starts. This is all for us. time, three times. That's why I always say this to myself and to everybody. Muslims should never say that word. What is bored mean? You have so many things to do in this life and you tell me I'm bored? Or I get depressed because I have nothing else to do? Faragufa, qabla shurri. Aginaka, qabla faqri. You have wealth, use it. For Allah, for your benefit before you get poor. What do you mean get poor? Things change, or you will have too much responsibility. And the last but not the least, like today, the, the, uh, it's amazing, and it's come to be not an instant. The garden I opened when we were empty. It's amazing. And you know, I used to say, Hi, how are you? I said, How are you? He said, I'm, I'm perfect. And I looked at him, and said, I'm alive. Inshallah, I remember the hadith. I asked him, You're alive before you die. So, I him. These is how high the goal And I'm just going to give you the rest of these one by one, and then you can always look it up later on. The extremely important in all of these things a prophet, a prophet, a prophet. Make sure those friends who, if they are not better than you, they are with you. Never, ever take a friend who's going to put you down. Because then you will not continue. Don't, don't have a friend say, what are you doing? Oh, I tried it, didn't work. Don't waste your time. Don't do that. Take a friend who finish and they are above you, and they say, oh, come on in, it's not a big deal, you see. In the beginning, it's hard, Allah will make it easy. That's what you want. Number nine, time. You need to be time efficient, as they say in these days and age. Very efficient. You don't waste your time. You don't do something that takes five minutes, you do it for 30 minutes, you're wasting your time. 
has to be extremely efficient. The list to do, and, and everyone, how much space you will give it that much time. Be open to different opinions. And this by itself means a whole lecture. Be open to different opinions. Especially when we come to Salah. These are all scholars who differ. Who are we to say who is right or wrong? Be open, especially when you are learning different methods or different opinions. Or be open. Be open. And number 12, which we talked about in the beginning, politeness with your teacher. Politeness with you. I cannot stress on this. I can't stress on this. Extreme politeness. Extreme politeness. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. Uddur al Ummah, they call him. He is like the ink of this Ummah, meaning he's the one who knows everything. He used to Anas uh, ibn uh, Anas, which is the, 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 the helper of Rasul Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Anas is. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas pulled the donkey of Sayyidina Anas. Because Sayyidina Anas taught him, he's younger. And he said, This is what we learned from Rasul Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Rasul Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Anas is the servant of the Rasul Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But because we learned from him, he used to pull him. And Sayyidina Anas is on the donkey or on the, uh, on the horse, and he pulled the horse. Now, writing the knowledge, reviewing the knowledge, memorizing the knowledge. What you are writing is not going to look at again, and nothing is going to stay here. So you write, you review, you memorize. Write, review, memorize. The last thing is you call people for Allah. When Allah is you for them. You never do it because you want to do it that way. Remember, in the in the retreat we said this, what is da'wah, invitation? You don't invite people to something you don't have. You invite people to your home when you have a house. You invite people to this gym when you are practicing this gym. So, last thing is you use your knowledge to teach, and I will say the first good people you teach is your household. If you teach your children, Alhamdulillah, you will have an ummah of ulama. If you focus on your house itself. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه تسليما كثيرا. Any questions, any comments? Okay, so the question for those of you who didn't hear is she has a small halaqa of girls. Okay, now we just said you do not learn the zine to teach. But if Allah already puts you in that position, then you should not be teaching unless you have a little bit of salary. So if you have teenager girls, for example, let's say, 12 to 13, 14, okay? Well, what are the things you need to teach them? And you need to go and look at that. Two things. The essential of the gene, which is called the the obligation. Like these girls need to learn about Salah. You'll be surprised how many women don't know anything about Salah, or, many, or about Tahara, or about Wudu, or about Wudu, or so. So these are the essentials. Then comes to the most important after this is the challenges of the day and age. What do you go see when they go to the public schools? And if you didn't, you've never, if any of you have not been in a public school, you need to go there. One day Allah invited me to speak to high schooler. Allah knows when I left what I was saying. And I was like, Ya Allah, to see the lessons of strength from all the people in that school. Right? So, yes, if I am already in that position, Allah puts me in that position, then I need to go and study. But I need to study the Parents, the importance, what is really for the girls, this is first thing is this, then the challenges. And you need to make them trust you and open up to you. Okay, and don't get upset when they ask you these challenging questions. And I'm going to say it here. For example, they ask about homosexuality. This is very common. This is everyone is talking about. You don't know? Nothing wrong with saying, you know what? Let's look at it. Because I don't have enough knowledge, I don't want to say something that is not right. And then you take that question and you ask that caller and you come back. And so if you are already in this, yes. Especially if you have girls yourself, absolutely. And learn what is needed for that group. And not that take them to the different opinion of Allah. Don't do that. It's just what they need. But absolutely. Don't stop and say, I don't know anything. Know your limits and teach what is essential. And Allah, and every time before you go, 